Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today we're going to talk about time. The Accidental Time Machine by Joe Haldeman, copyright 2007. Before we get into this, let's take a look at Wikipedia and take a look at time travels and time stories from the past. This is an incomplete list, but it's a list of time travel in novels, short stories, and on the stage. And we're going to just stop at a few points in here. So you can see there's Rip Van Winkle. It's a short story by American author Washington Irving, first published in 1819. A man falls asleep on a mountainside and wakes 20 years in the future. He finds he has been forgotten. His wife has died and his daughter is no longer a child. Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is a popular early time travel story. The heartless Ebenezer Scrooge, an old miser, is visited by the ghost of his former business partner Jacob Marley and the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and yet to come in order to teach him the consequences of his selfish ways. Next, let's stop at The Chronic Argonauts. It's an 1888 short story by H.G. Wells. It features an inventor who builds a time machine and travels in time using it, and it predates Wells' best-selling 1895 time travel novel, The Time Machine, by seven years. Or you may have read A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court by Mark Twain. A man of the 19th century travels back to 528 AD in King Arthur's time. That brings us to The Time Machine. This may be what most people think of as the first time travel novel. As you can see, though, there is already a long line of literary history in this area. An inventor creates a time machine and travels to the year 802,701 AD. There, humans have evolved into two species, Morlocks and Eloy. Moving on, we stop at Mimsy Were the Bora Groves, a science fiction short story by Lewis Paget. That's a pseudonym for Henry Kuttner and C.L. Moore. A scientist, millions of years in the future, in two experiments with time machines, uses boxes of educational toys as test subjects. One lands in the 19th century and influences Lewis Carroll's writing of the poem Jabberwocky. The other arrives in 1942 and causes two children to develop parahuman abilities incomprehensible to their parents. The film The Last Mimsy was loosely based on this story. As we go on, we'll see more and more stories appear. A Sound of Thunder by Ray Bradbury is very important. It introduces the butterfly effect, meaning that changes made in the past will affect the future. Ward Moore's Bring the Jubilee, a time traveler from an alternate reality, travels back to the Battle of Gettysburg and changes his own future into ours. The End of Eternity. I've reviewed this one on my channel. It's a great story. In fact, it's one of my favorite novels of Isaac Asimov. Time guardians carry out reality changes to minimize human suffering as integrated over the whole of future human history. And we can go on. We have The Star is My Destination by Alfred Bester. Gullifoyle lives in a future where self-teleportation is common. He learns to teleport through time. Bit of a plot spoiler there. The Door into Summer by Robert A. Heinlein. He takes a turn here at Time Travel Stories. It's actually one of his best novels, in my opinion. A man has been trapped in suspended animation for 30 years. After his release, he uses a time machine to travel back in time and exact revenge on his friend and his fiancée who stole his business. It doesn't say it here, but this is one of those great science fiction stories that includes a cat. The cat is a major character and is placed into suspended animation with him. On and on we could go with this list. If you're interested, just look it up on Wikipedia. I just want to show you now a few of the time travel novels that I have. So we've got The Granddaddy of Time Travel Novels, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. That's 1895. In the Ace Science Fiction Special Series 1, there's a number of time travel stories. The first one that I read was Past Master by R.A. Lafferty. Here we have Sir Thomas Moore brought into the future to try to save a society. Is this supposed to be a new utopia or is there something else going on? Wilson Tucker, The Lincoln Hunters. And again, Wilson Tucker, The Year of the Quiet Sun. The time travel story was a favorite of Wilson Tucker's. 
D.G. Compton took a turn at it with Chronicles. Then I have a book from my SF Masterworks collection. There's a number of them that deal with time travel, but Roger Zelazny, Road Marks. And perhaps one of my favorite time travel stories, Stephen King's 112263. It's a big guy, but it's a very, very good story about what would happen if you could affect the future by interfering with the assassination of John F. Kennedy. That brings us to today's book. This is a review, after all, of The Accidental Time Machine by Joe Haldeman. The last book of Joe Haldeman's that I read was The Forever War, a classic military SF novel by Vietnam veteran Joe Haldeman. This is not a serious type of novel. This is more of a fun-loving story, perhaps more like Robert A. Heinlein's The Door into Summer in tone. Grad school dropout Matt Fuller is toiling as a lowly research assistant at MIT when, while measuring quantum relationships between gravity and light, his calibrator disappears and reappears one second later. In fact, every time Matt hits the reset button, the machine goes missing 12 times longer. I think you can see how this is going to play out exponentially. After tinkering with the calibrator, Matt is convinced that what he has in his possession is a time machine. And by simply attaching a metal box to it, he learns to send things through time, including a pet store turtle, which come back no worse for wear. With a dead-end job and a girlfriend who has left him for another man, Matt has nothing to lose by taking a time machine trip himself. So he borrows an old car, stocks it with food and water, and ends up in the near future, under arrest for the murder of the car's original owner, who dropped dead after seeing Matt disappear before his eyes. The only way to beat the rap is to keep time traveling until he finds a place in time safe enough to stop for good. But such a place may not exist. This time machine only moves forward, and it moves forward exponentially. So eventually, It's getting to be months or years or eventually a great span of years with these exponential jumps. Now, in talking about time travel stories, it's difficult not to spoil some of the plots. Let me just tell you a little bit briefly about a couple places he lands. One is the east coast of the United States, where he lands again at MIT near Boston. Eastern United States is now cut off from the rest of the United States. It's become a fundamentalist Christian enclave of sorts. It's a weird mix of denying some technology and knowledge and still embracing other technology. Will Matt be a heretic in this society? Will he be able to get back to his time machine and travel again? In another future jump, we do find out about the other side of the United States, and we start to explore as we jump forward AI and its desire to see what happens at the end of time. But the big questions for our protagonists is, will he get a girl? Is there a place he can stop in time and live? Will future times have the ability to send him back in time? This is what I call one of my popcorn reads. It's like a movie, grabbing my popcorn and drink and enjoying it. Even though there's allegories in some of the different places we stop in time, It's more of a fun read. I wouldn't call this an important novel, but if you're looking for a good summer read, this novel could be for you. I give The Accidental Time Machine 7 out of 10. Have you read this novel? How about some other time travel novels that you really appreciate? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, until next time, 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 time. Keep reading.